Being in space, I observe the Earth from a renewed perspective. There are no lines separating countries, nations, or states. From the window aboard the Space Shuttle Discovery, the Earth is one world, and we are one people. Ambassador Kennedy, uh, distinguished guests, I thank you for this invitation and the opportunity to speak with all of you tonight. Over 50 years ago, on September 12, 1962, President John F. Kennedy delivered his famous address on the nation's space effort at the Rice University in Houston, Texas. That was before I was born. <laughs> at the time, President Kennedy uh, planted the seed that has grown into a complex international cooperation of exploring the unknowns of space. I am moved to stand here today as a civil servant executing this bold vision as part of thousands of dedicated men and women in human space exploration around the world. I still vividly remember that I had a strong longing for flying in space when I saw the Apollo 11 landing at the age of five. Because of this desire, which I have cherished since then, I am here with you. And I will always be grateful to President Kennedy for giving us the dream of space exploration. The experience of uh, working and training alongside my Japanese, American, and other international colleagues, including our great friend and honorable NASA Administrator Charlie Bolden, for the past 22 years, will always count to the most rewarding accomplishments of my lifetime. I was very fortunate to be able to, to learn from the great leaders of space flight, such as Space Shuttle Commander Brian Duffy, on my first and second space flights as to how to put together and lead a team for a successful mission. Dr. Mamoru Mori is the first Japanese astronaut to fly on a space shuttle back in 1992. Dr. Chaki Mukai, who is present here, uh, is the first female astronaut from Japan, and he, she served on two space shuttle missions. Each time we work together in space and on the ground as a team, we solidified the partnership between our two nations. The successful continuation of the ISS operation for more than 15 years symbolizes a great example of international cooperation. Living in space for six months is tough, both physiologically and psychologically. No shower for six months, all of our activities on board are monitored by the ground, and no playing baseball. The water supply is limited. We, uh, we recycle our urine and sweat for potable water. In other words, in space, we turn yesterday's coffee into tomorrow's coffee. <laughs> and no sushi for six months is a really tough one for me. One of my ma many benefits of our international human space program is that we have food supplies from different countries. A variety of food available on board the station provides a big psychological boost as we live and work in an isolated environment of space for many months. JAXA already has 28 certified Japanese face food items, and currently there are 33 more in the process of certification testing. Today's human space exploration has become an international effort and spans around the globe and reminds us that we all belong to one human race and share one planet. Whenever different nations come together to work on common goals, there are many challenges to overcome based on different cultural contexts. But the final product becomes a remarkable example of pooling visions to advance our human race in a peaceful manner. I would like to close by uh, quoting one of my heroes, Japanese-American astronaut Ellison Onizuka of NASA, who had devoted his life to human space exploration before losing his life in 1986 Challenger incident. Following his mission into space in 1985, Ellison said, being in space, I observe the Earth from a renewed perspective. There are no lines separating countries, nations, or states. From the window aboard the Space Shuttle Discovery, the Earth is one world, 
and we are one people. Thank you very much for your attention.